हेलो गाइस दिस इज रिशव एंड यू आर वाचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ लीगल एंड मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज आईएलएमएस एकेडमी इंडिया प्रीमियर लीगल एंड मैनेजमेंट एजुकेशन पोर्टल गेट सर्टिफाइड टू एनहांस एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी टर्म्स एंड क्लॉजेस देयर आर सर्टेन बेसिक टर्म्स एंड क्लॉजेस दैट आर वेरी जनरल एंड बेसिक इन नेचर सच क्लॉजेस फॉर्म अ पार्ट ऑफ एवरी काइंड ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द फॉलोइंग आर अ फ्यू ऑफ सच क्लॉजेस Number one, subject and its legality. The first and foremost place to begin the drafting of a contract is to determine what the subject of the contract is. The subject of the contract will determine the nature of the contract. The subject of the contract will also determine if the contract will be legally enforceable or not. While reviewing a contract, this is the first point one must look at. Many cases are won simply by stating that the subject of a contract is not considered to be legal in the eyes of the prevailing laws. Number 2 definition clause each and every contract must consist of a definition clause such clause contains all the definitions to various words that are used throughout the contract certain words holding a general meaning may be used throughout a contract but the contract may contain a definition of such word which might be described the meaning of such word specifically in relation to said contract In such cases no other meaning of the word will be accepted as the word has specifically been stated and agreed upon by the parties of the contract and as such in binding on them number 3 term of contract contracts are generally made for a definitive period of time no matter how long the time frame may be the terms consists of a specifically stated time period during which the relationship between the parties will be governed by the terms of such contract and once the time period expires the contract automatically dissolves in many cases the term of the contract also depends on the achieving of a certain goal for which the contract has been entered upon for example a and b enter into a contract that will last for such time as it takes for them to reach place a a once they will reach the place a a the contract between them will dissolve number 4 clause for renewal of contract such clauses are inserted to relinquish the need to make different contracts from time to time if the nature of the work and the terms stipulated in the contract need not be changed for a long period of time a renewal clause can be inserted to ensure continual binding effect of the contract without incurring the expenses of drafting and registering different contracts over and over again such clauses are often included in the clause describing the term of the contract number 5 consideration amount and legality another important clause in a contract is the clause stating the amount of consideration it states the consideration amount that one or more parties must pay to the other party or parties for service done or goods produced by the latter such consideration must always be legal in nature The consideration must be paid through an instrument or object that is legally recognized by the law in force. A consideration paid through an illegal object will render the entire contract to be void and have no legal enforceability. Number 6, inspection of products and goods. This clause helps the parties to safeguard themselves from cases of fraud or misrepresentation which may arise due to insufficient quality of products and goods so delivered. This allows the purchaser to inspect every good so as to be sure that the goods so received are of such quality as has been agreed between them. On the other hand, it also provides a safety net to the selling party because once the quality of the good is inspected and accepted, the purchaser cannot hold the seller liable for any quality related issues in the future. Number 7, return or refund This clause describes all the circumstances and scenarios in which the parties are entitled to return of the product and or receive refund of the consideration paid for such product. This is generally used in contracts of sale of movable properties. Number 8, dispute settlement and jurisdiction. This is also an important clause that one must never forget to draft and review. This clause decides as to what mode of dispute resolution or what legal recourse will be taken by the parties to the contract when a dispute arises in between the parties. In the current world, almost every contract contains this clause and most of them opt for alternative dispute resolution systems like arbitration, mediation, etc. to solve disputes. Another clause which is generally included in the dispute settlement clause is the clause describing the jurisdiction in which any dispute will be resolved. 
For example, many multinational companies include a jurisdiction clause stating that any case which involves litigation may only be filed against the company in a specific city, town or area. Number 9 terms related to cancellation of the contract. These are clauses which record the circumstances under which the contract shall stand cancelled. It generally includes certain acts that the parties are barred from and in violation of such a term the cancellation clause will be invoked and the contract will be cancelled. It also includes the rights and liabilities that the parties of the contract will be entitled to when the contract stands cancelled. Number 10 rights and duties of the parties. Every contract must mandatorily include the clause that enumerate the rights and duties of the parties in respect to one another. These clauses form the crux of every contract and violation of these clauses generally forms the core to the disputes that arise between the parties to the contract. Each and every right and obligation of the parties must be specifically stated with as much detail as possible to avoid any ambiguity or vagueness whatsoever. Number 11 force majeure Under the contract laws force majeure refers to all such unforeseeable and unpredictable scenarios and circumstances which may stop one from executing his or her duty thereby leaving the contract unfulfilled Force majeure clauses talk about various contingencies including but not limited to the acts of god and what shall be the role of such parties when such a situation may arise during the tenure of the contract This is often overlooked during the process of drafting and reviewing nevertheless it is as important a clause as any other as it details the sharing of expenses and costs that are incurred during the time of contingencies number 12 delegation and liability this clause is mostly found in contracts and agreements related to manufacture and sale of movable products the clause states what kind of work can be delegated by the parties to other third and or unknown parties to the contract and who may be held liable for any dispute that may arise due to insufficiency or insufficiency of product and or services provided by such third party number 13 payments of expenses this clause states how the expenses incurred by virtue of the contract and throughout the tenure of the contract shall be paid for it states in what proportion of the parties to the contract may share the expenses so incurred and what may be the mode of such payments number 14 profit sharing Once the expenses are paid for it is time for sharing the profit that has been gained by the virtue of the contract the profit sharing clause states the proportion in which the profit will be shared by the parties and how a part of such profit may be used for other purposes as agreed between the parties number 15 compensation the compensation clause states the amount with which one must compensate another for the actions submissions defaults done by the former which has resulted in some sort of loss financial physical or mental to the latter this clause is not seen so often in contracts that had been drafted up until a few decades ago however in the current system we will find compensation clauses in most of the contracts that come to us Consumers of services and products often invoke the compensation clause on various grounds and are often awarded large sums as compensation amounts by the courts and or tribunal whatever the case may be. Conclusion In my experience there are small areas that are essential for the formation of a good contract. The inclusion of the before stated terms and conditions will give the viewer a detailed idea of what is sought to be achieved by the contract and what is the relationship between the parties. Further, any dispute between the parties to the contract can be efficiently dealt with if the clauses given herein above are included to the contract. All such efforts will result in a contract which will save a lot of time, effort and costs which could have occurred otherwise. Further the review of the drafted contracts is equally as important as the drafting itself if a contract is not reviewed then the signing party or parties may be at risk of affirming terms and clauses which may not be favorable to them and which may cause them financial or mental injury in the future visit ilms academy for various courses from contract drafting rti labor law gst and more get certified to enhance employability